Hey everyone, I'm Nick. I'm Vic. And we're Envy Board Gaming. We're here for another review. This one is of Biblios Quill and Parchment. It's a game by Steve Finn. It's by and Dr. Finn uh, Games published it. It's a one to four player game. Vic's gonna walk us through it and we'll be back with our review. All right, we are here set up for a two player game of Biblios Quill and Parchment. This is a roll and write variant of the Biblios game. Not exactly the same game. There's a little bit different uh, to it. We are focusing on um, the A side of these dry erase boards that the players uh, get. Um, the B side will be revealed when we put out our uh, playthrough of the B side. Nick and I um, did a video where we, we played that game at two players as well on the other side. But the A side is a little more simple, um, but the rules really remain really the same for both sides. So um, for a side here, uh, what you're trying to do in this one is you're trying to ultimately score the most points, scoring points by um, having gold left over. All of the scoring is listed actually right out on your um, board, but um, you'll want to get to the top of each of these tracks if you can, get to the highest that you can um, on all of these different um, colors that coincide with the values of the dice. And ultimately, just like the other Biblios, uh, if you've played that, which we also have an overview and review of, um, there are values of the dice that are going to be manipulated by players um, using this plus and minus kind of uh, thing, just like the cards and the biblios thing. And you're going to try to get the value of whatever you have the highest amount of to be high because it's going to be a multiplier for points. And then there is moving around on this map. On both sides, there's a component of traveling around. And you'll want to mark off the different places you've been. You're going to score points for visiting these little castles. Um, there are points awarded for coins left over, as I mentioned. Charity, which is this cross here, you're going to get a multiplier uh, depending on how many of those uh, that you filled out. You'll usually get those from a dice that you uh, can't use. That's generally the, the charity uh, function there, unless you're playing on the B side. Uh, there's a chapel, which these all come up on your dice, which I'll show you what players are going to do when the rolling part starts. Um, but there are chapel of uh, that's recorded over here, you're gonna score points as you move up. So randomly you'll determine the start uh, with the shapes that are actually in the top left of your player board. So I'll be a square, and then we just throw the circle there and the triangle like so. And you'll just work your way up when you obviously achieve these different bonuses. You'll either immediately take that uh, award or you'll get the um, player points, the victory points at the end. At the very bottom, uh, the last thing you'll score is going to be a multiplier of how whoever has the majority of these tracks for each color, and that'll multiply, as I mentioned, with the dice that you've been adjusting, or other players as well could have the opportunity to adjust, and you will um, score a multiplier. So if you're the first person, you're going to get the, um, the three times. If you are the, in second place, you'll get the two times. And if you are uh, last, you'll just get straight up the value of the dice. If there's a tie, there's it's the half value of what the dice is. Um, so if in, in the case of a tie, that's what you do here. As we're set up for two players, you actually have a dummy player component. It's quite simple. You'll just make sure you always roll the three dice uh, in this phase that come with uh, the player. And then you'll give them their... Uh, um, whatever they've rolled so that you're going to keep track of that as well. So you'll just do the little X's. Anyway, so here's how we start. Players have these two white dice which have numeric values. That's for your coins. There's this black dice here. This dice is for traveling. It's got um, the little monk symbol on it. Um, it also has this one that has a star. That just means you get a, uh, to mark off a star at the top of one of the tracks as long as you have a dice uh, that matches that color, and then you will also get an X on one, whatever color dice, um, so a gray for instance, or pink or blue, um, that's what that would do, and you can move one. And then these are obviously um, your uh, different achievements that you can get, uh, the different colors. So as you roll these, you will ch cross off whatever color you've got. If you get a chapel, as I mentioned, you'll move up on that chapel by just putting your, your shape up, um, and that's going to be determined too uh, in a different phase when everybody has uh, presented how many church icons they have they'll just move up that so anyways roll the dice and you get your result here and you can choose now at this point if you want to re-roll all of your dice 
none of your dice or exactly one of your dice. Um, this is a choice that you'll make. Players are going to reveal simultaneously what they're going to do. They're not just going to do it. Um, so it, it does, you kind of want to look, see what your opponent's doing, but this is really, this part of the game, you're kind of doing your own thing. So I would, uh, you know, maybe I don't want to get two reds right now and I wanted to do another one. I would uh, wait, one, two, three, we'd both reveal, and I would, you know, indicate one, that I just want to reroll one dice with, by having my finger out like that. If you want to do all your dice, you would do uh, your hand up like so, and if you want to do none, it's almost like a, a blackjack, you could do a no. <laughs> like a, nope, I'm not doing it. Um, but anyway, I'll re-roll that, and I got a green. And so you only get to roll twice. You don't get to keep rolling your dice. Uh, both players will have two opportunities to roll. Um, if I was happy with that, I would then reveal I'm staying on that, and I can start marking off. So I'm going to put add up the five and the four here to put nine coins. I will then cross off the gray because I have a gray dice, and I'll do the red here and the green. And I had two travels, so I'll just move from the starting position here. You can choose the way you want to go on this map. Some are longer routes with more rewards, or if you want to try to get to the uh, end, the final castle quicker, it's kind of your decision there. So I would decide to perhaps move two, and I would indicate an X where I've stopped there. Um, you would, If you pass through a reward on this map, on this side, you will receive that reward immediately. And uh, we would roll up our dummy here, um, mark off what they have. So they have the X and the X there, the two green and the red. And my opponent would have rolled their dice and marked down what they had. We would continue in this way until we hit this two symbol down here. That's when we're going to get into phase two or act two of this, where we will take all the money that we've added up all along here um, and we will then use that to bid with each other. So if we imagine that I had 30 coins there at the bottom after playing through the first act, uh, we would reveal in secret. So each player would write down how much they're going to wager. And let's say I went with five coins. I would then show my opponent. He, they would have marked down what they are willing to wager. Uh, but let me back up for a moment and actually tell you what we're betting on here. I almost forgot. So this board here is revealing what the different awards are going to be. Uh, we'll just take these white dice out. They don't really factor in in this phase. Um, and you'll see the colors tell you how what dice there are going to be. So there's going to be different uh, awards here depending on um, what you've set out. So if we do this here and we put these two there. Um, these are the different uh, things you're going to be able to win or bid on. So in this case, we would have rolled these all up one at a time here and kind of put them in to our spots. So if we just play pretend that these were all rolled up, um, we could then uh, auction on them. So if I had bid five, my opponent bid uh, three, let's say. Because they are more than half, they'll get second choice. But if they weren't at least half of, of what my uh, my bid was, they wouldn't have a chance. They would just take the leftovers, and the first player would get to assign to the dummy, um, leaving the, the, the other player with only one choice. Um, so if I was going to go for this, you know, I would have taken bid my deducted five from my initial coin. So I'll write down 25 there because it's spent. And then I would decide if I wanted to take whatever of these. So I would probably go for this um, and then mark off as I did in the first phase. Um, and I got the star here, as I mentioned. So I would put a star maybe on the gray and then I'd add one there. And I have a plus. So I'm going to use the plus to manipulate the one that I feel I have the most of because that's the best strategy, I'd say. <laughs> so I'll make that three into a four on the gray dice. And I'll just continue doing this until we reach the final amount of coins. Um, and that's when you would uh, add up your totals. And they're, they're all written out, as I mentioned. You're going to score points, and whoever has the most points uh, wins. The map area here, it's all written in front of you. If you only went to one castle, you get two points. If you went to two castles, you get five. And ten, uh, ten points if you went to all three castles. It's all, like I said, here. So you put the numbers in. And 
final score, whoever has the highest score wins. And that's how you play. All right, that's how you play Biblios Quill and Parchment. It's a new game that just came out. We're uh, fans of Biblios, which is an older game. I believe that one came out like 07 or 08 or something. I'm not sure. Um, we like that game. I like the bidding mechanism in that game. Yeah. And the two stages, pretty clever. And I love how they brought it into this one, too. I love that there's two, they're still true to the new one where there's two acts, totally separate from the game. Um, I like It's a clever way of doing this. It looks a little sloppy at first, the way you're adding those numbers down. It kind of yeah. looks going every which way. It's a little confusing. But then when you, when you get the hang of it, it actually is pretty clever. I like that. Um, I like the map that's on there, the journey map, but it's pretty small. It's kind of strange how small that map is. Yeah. So we're going to do a playthrough, and I don't know how that's going to translate after we do this review. We'll have a playthrough posted. Um, I'm not sure how that's going to look because of that journey map, how small that map is on each individual pad. Yeah. Um, I like the player boards. Aesthetically, it looks nice. It, the, I like the everything. The production is nice. I love the dice. I love the printed dice. There's something about them. I just like those dice. Mm-hmm. Um, and I like our little uh, play mats. I like the the pens that we get. They're sharp angled. Yeah. I like that. Those are spiffy. Those it the way it writes on the board is nice, and it's better than a lot of these um, games where you get those you know those um what do you call the dry race? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> is it as good as Biblios? Is a good question. Uh, it's pretty close. I think I would score Biblios a solid eight and even eight, and I'm gonna score this one. I'm going to give it a 7-9. So, I mean, I slightly prefer Biblios, the original, slightly. But, you know, we're not huge on rolling rights generally. And this is a good one. If you need a rolling right in your collection, and, you know, there's a lot of good flipping rights. And we like those. We like yeah. photographers. And we like uh, Welcome To. Mm-hmm. There's plenty of those that we do like. Um, this one, I would say it is near at par with those type of games, but maybe slightly under. I don't know. Um, normally, I would think something like rolling would be a little better than flipping cards, but I'm not sure that's the case. This one seems almost a little too simple at spots, but the cleanness of it, it's still really enjoyable. That's why I give it a good score. I'm still giving it a 7-9, so I do like the game. It's a quick one. Once you learn the game, Vic and I can breeze through this in 15 minutes, probably. Yeah, and if you do watch our playthrough of this, you'll see uh, how quickly we did go through the game and how quick those turns back and forth really were, which I can appreciate that you, um, on the first phase, you're doing things simultaneously, but it's just so quick that you determine what you're going to do, how you're going to assign those things, that there's not a lot of analysis paralysis or people really contemplating strategies here. It's pretty straightforward, very easy to teach, which I can certainly appreciate uh, to have a nice little filler game in between like some heavier games. Mm -hmm. And if you're ever, you know, looking for something to fill in the blanks there, I think that Biblios is a strong strong pick for that. Um, the colors, the component quality, like Nick mentioned, I really enjoyed that. I thought that was nice. Um, altogether, the game is solid to me. Um, I would agree with Nick, and it's funny when he said 8 for Biblios, because I was thinking the same thing for Biblios, the original OG game. I liked that one. I just like the flipping of the cards. I like not knowing what somebody has uh, cast away and what they've given you, and then you get a card, but you can see our playthrough of that game. Uh, we, we have that as well that we've done. We haven't yet done a review, but um, for this game, I'm scoring it a 7.8, so very close to Nick's score. 7.8, that is what I was thinking uh, with this one. Um, just... You know, I do recommend getting it, even though it hasn't uh, gotten past the eights for me. Um, a lot of the reasons that Nick said, that's why I would recommend it. And it just all together was just fun and well received when we had brought it out at three players. We've done it at two and three, had a good time and with both of those player counts. So I think it's pretty versatile that way. And I think people enjoy writing with dry erase markers. Yeah, especially in good, good quality ones. I yeah. always do. Yeah, and it's a it's a pretty clean teach. Mm-hmm. I, can, I think I taught it in three to five minutes, um, a couple people, and so that's a plus. If you want something you can, you know, in between something, maybe you're trying to stall or whatever you're trying to do, um, and just you know fill fill a twenty minute gap. You're trying to teach the game and get it played in about twenty minutes. That's really good. Um, and like I said, there's a lot of cleverness here. The down the downfall is there's not that. There's not that area of real meaty decisions. That's what I was thinking too. Like this, not really. Biblos had better decisions. So keeping it, passing it, giving it to the public, giving it to the auction, keeping it for yourself. This one didn't have that. It kind of did in the second phase. When you're auctioning, We're... determining what you're going to bid. 
Um, Cause that's what I thought. A little bit. Yeah. Uh, a little bit. Not as good, maybe as Biblios. It's I don't know the the bidding part you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Just because you have so many of them, you're usually in the forties. So yeah, you want you basically just want it divisible by three or four, depending on the mode you're playing. Yeah, that's at, true. At the very end, mm-hmm. um, there's some spots where you don't actually care. You bid zero, and you can. There might be a few of those spots where you bid zero. Like, oh, I see three of them. I don't mind if I have any of them. I'll, I'll just bid zero. Yeah, Whatever there were times you're right that you're defaulting to just like I would sometimes just zero zero. I don't even care about this option. Sometimes, yeah. Not well, all the time, but occasionally there's motive for not doing that. There, you can see a color that you want or a travel one that's a, a, a exponentially better than others or something. Then mm-hmm. there might be something there for you or something you need or maybe mitigating some of those numbers. Just the dice, yeah. Yep. Um, so it does have those decisions. It's just not as strong as Biblios in that area, but it does make up for it in a lot of other spots like how quick it is. And Biblios is a quick game too. So mm-hmm. we can get that done really quick as well. It makes up for that. So this is even quicker than Biblios, I think. Um, look, there's like no setup. You just throw the pens out there. And, you know. <laughs> yeah, and the placemats. So yeah, pros and cons. Um, they're pretty much equal. As you can see, we're off by point one and point two. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah. it's whatever. If you like Biblios, you should like that. I would think you should like this one. Yeah, and it was nice that they have two sides. So they didn't just give mm-hmm. you one side of the placemat. You you or the playmat. You also have another um thing that is just a little bit different. Um, but it's pretty much the same kind of objective that you're going for. They did introduce the praying at the church, going to the chapel, moving up on that. So there are some things, you know, you're not just simply recording, oh, did you get a red, pink, or a green? They didn't add that, but they changed it. They they modified this what yeah. I mean, but they had this in this game where there are, you know, there's more than meets the eye when you first think of a roll and write. It's not just strictly, you know, rolling things. And, and the way that you uh, can determine if you're going to re-roll one, like only one of them, all of them or keep all of them like that's something Mm -hmm. so sometimes you'll get to in certain rolling uh games you get to choose how many dice you're doing and this one kind of limits you into doing specific those kind of rerolls. like that yeah i like that as well because anyway what what do you have three if you have two or three then you might just re-roll them all you Mm -hmm. might just say oh i re-roll them all i like these two dice and you can't just keep one of them um another thing i wanted to add that um I have to wait too long and I forget. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I'm going to cut it. And I'm going to say another thing I want to add. Another thing that I want to add is if you didn't watch the teach, um, we did say that, I think in the teach that we said we're, we're going to play this at the B side, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you did the teach on that. So... We want to make sure that you know that when we do the playthrough, if you're watching this like current to the time we upload it, it's coming up. We're going to have the playthrough and it will be on the B side. So, and if you're here years later, just know there's another video out there that we did the B side. So Vic taught the A side in this video. If you want to see what the, what else the game has to offer, check the it. other half of the game, the, the board flipped over. Yeah. Go check out that video. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up, like, subscribe to our channel, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.